Easy 2010 hemos tenido la satisfacción de asistir a la conferencia de casi una hora de duración que ha impartido el doctor El Gamal, que está ahora con nosotros para una corta entrevista. Welcome, Mr. El Gamal, to the Technical University of Madrid, whose telecommunication school is hosting the, the conference. Okay. Mr. El Gamal, we have had the pleasure to hear your conference that has been uh, recorded and will be uploaded to the internet. Uh, we are willing to, to do a short interview uh, asking you your opinion about some subjects that concern society. General questions, okay? It's related to another question we have here now. Yes. Uh, uh, since public key ciphering was born about 30 years ago, it seems that its evolution in order to keep or to strengthen security has been supported mainly for the continuous increasing of the key sizes. What are the possibilities that a qualitative change rises? So, so there, are, there are different types of advances. Uh, in, in technology that might make an implementation of a particular public key uh, less secure, for example. Uh, the simple is computers get more, more powerful every year. So the reason the keys grow is because computers get more powerful. So every five to ten years, uh, we have to increase the size of, of these keys if we continue to use the same algorithm, just because computers are more powerful. Um, however, the, 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 because, because most of these algorithms are mathematically oriented, there might be a case where somebody fa finds out a different way that makes breaking one of these algorithms much, much easier. And in that case, we need something different. So unfortunately, we don't have an implementation in e-commerce that makes that very simple. There are other public key cryptography methods that are known and have been in use and, and have good security parameters and could be used on a wide scale depending on what happens. But we do not have a graceful way to change. So the only graceful way we have to change is increase the key because yeah, you're know. just increasing the, the modulus and, and, and you don't have to change too many things. Um, I was actually giving a presentation uh, a year ago about, about the subject. So the right way to implement e-commerce, which is a big issue, was to actually not make it based on a single algorithm but on two things. So if one of them got broken, you would use the second one, and then you replace the first one with the third, and then you continue to, to switch like that. And we actually had these ideas maybe 15, 20 years ago, but it never got implemented because yeah. it's too expensive. So now we actually have a problem because all of e-commerce is dependent on this one root key or yeah. 20 root keys or something like that. Um, and it would actually be very costly, but there was always ways... There are other algorithms that are known that, have, that are fundamentally different in terms of the mathematics, so they will not be affected by the same attack effectively, but it would be expensive yeah. to implement. Okay, another question. We have here rumor, uh, and we know there is a social concern on commercial pictographic product having a trapdoor. <laughs> uh, what can you tell? Uh, uh, what can you tell us about that fact or that rumor? I don't know if that's fact or a rumor. Um, it could be a fact and a rumor, it turns out, also. Um, it's a big concern. Yes. Uh, so, so uh, I think we're talking about a product. That, that has a trapdoor, not the cryptography that has the trapdoor necessarily. Because cryptography has a trapdoor is a very small subset. Uh, and, and there's a lot of different ways one can build a trapdoor into a system. The simplest one is, is what we call key escrow. 
So suppose you're in, you're running IT in an organization, CIO in some big organization, and people use encryption to store important information. So far, so good. And one of the employees takes the data and encrypts it. But then the employee leaves, and then there's no key anymore. So, so, but the information actually belongs to the organization. Now, now you're actually putting the organization at risk because of the use of good technology, which is encryption. So the notion of key escrow started out as a solution to that problem that says, yes, you're an employee in this company. You need to encrypt the data according to the policy of the company, but we cannot make the encryption only dependent on the person. Right? So, so now, all of a sudden, you have two entities that have access to the key. And that's one form of a trapdoor, actually, because there's another way to get access to the key that encrypted the data in the first place. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the easiest form of, of a trapdoor that one can think of. Um, so, so, how do you solve that problem? So you solve that problem by having processes to hide the keys and so on and so forth. Now, there's also rumors about countries want to spy on each other, and, and that is very difficult for me to tell, because without actually investigating the, the particular product we're talking about, you, you know, you, you cannot actually tell mm -hmm. whether there's a real technological trap to it. Um, we, we do not do security testing well. So, so the, there... You know, there is something called security testing in the technological world, which means that does the security work correctly in the sense that can you break it like a trapdoor or some other method. And, and that science is not very well known yet, but, but it is actually very important. There is no other way. You cannot tell on the surface whether, the, because it's called a trapdoor for a reason, right? It's not, it's not, it's, you can't see it from the outside. Um, so if the application is really, really important, it is actually worth the investment to do security testing on the technology you're willing to buy. Uh, it's again, it's, it's part of risk management, right? So in some cases, you, you should actually be looking into the technology harder and you know, ask the vendors for more information and, and do more security testing if it's, if, it's, if it's really important. Okay. Another rumor? Yeah. Not obtained from reliable sources, but here quite often, is that cryptographic knowledge for military uses go a decade or so in advance to the same science applications for civil uses. uses. Uh, could you tell about, uh, us if that estimation of period is correct, 10 or 10 years or so? And in your opinion, what are the positive and the negative aspects of such a gap? So, does military have 10 year advantage in knowing of... of uh, so, it used to be. Um, in, in, when, before public key cryptography, uh, most cryptographic methods were, were basically shuffling things, mm -hmm. traditional keys. Uh, and, and, and these methods were mostly done in the military, it turns out. The, the one application we used cryptography for was in wars. Because you didn't want the, the enemy to know what you're doing. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, public key cryptography was invented in academia, yeah. not in the military. I'm sure. So there is no advantage whatsoever. Actually, the, but most of the, most of the you know, agencies worldwide, there's no country, uh, have, have tried to, you know, advance the knowledge about public key, and, I, and they did. But I don't think there is any advantage one way or another. I think they're all known at this point in time. Okay. But, but the, the symmetric key algorithms, you're always going to find in every country, now I don't have evidence, but I think in every country that, that you will find in a military different methods being used to do the symmetric key encryption mm -hmm. uh, because it's more trusted or whatever. Okay. Thank you. Ten years? I'm not really sure. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Finally, <laughs> uh, we would like to hear your opinion about how 
civil rights uh, are confronted uh, to criminal uses when ciphering communication. Uh, what do you think should be done by government to, to deal with that confrontation? Yes, yeah, so uh, this is an ongoing debate. Uh, does the government have the right to quote unquote spy on everybody because there are criminals? And so every society has criminals. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's terrorists from other countries that you really do not want in any place. And if you know that one of these people exists, you really want to get rid of them, put them in jail forever, right? There's no question. Now, does that give the government the right to spy on everything and everybody because they thought so? And I think that's an exaggeration. I, I think it's kind of like airport security a little bit. Um, I think targeted, targeted attacks work best. So targeted screening will also work best. Uh, you know, trying to get access to 15,000 petabytes on every wire in the world to, to see whether there's some terrorist talking to somebody else is not the right thing to do. There's way too much information. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be pre-information to determine who could be. And if that information is right, then the amount of information that our government really needs to, to listen to, to, to determine whether somebody is good or not is going to be much less. And then just regular people walking in the street will not be affected by it. That's my own personal belief. Now, I'm not a military person, and I've never worked in any government. I'm, I'm a technology person, right? But I believe that the way to solve these terrorist problems and, the, and, and, and you know, whatever, and criminal issues and all of these, is by targeting, not by listening to everything. Thank you very much, Mr. Gamal, for being with us at the ISI 2010. We hope you enjoy your stay in Madrid.